<laughs> we got the Petersons cornered here. <laughs> I'm Caitlin Brady with uh, Olmsted Soil and Water Conservation District, and I'm on the uh, um, day to day administrative leads for this process. Good morning, here, Olmsted Soil and Water. Um, Caitlin? Larry Tyson, Wabashaw County, uh, Soil and Water Supervisor. Bob Walker, Wabashaw County Commissioner. That's everybody. Our first item is to approve the agenda. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Next up, through the minutes of June 10th. Anybody got a motion? So moved. All right. Second. Perfect. Any questions? All right. We're going to vote. All in favor? All right. All right. Opposed? Aries. Next up, approve payment of Olmsted Soil Water Conservation District in invoice number 2266 in the amount of $3,025.53. Any questions on that? Hearing none, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. All right. Thank you. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aries. Letter E. Full payment of bar engineering invoice 2355-1058-23, which is here. Did everybody else get it or not? Yep, everyone said I just passed it out to everybody. So this one was uh, in addition to what that was sent out earlier. That's in the amount of $18,568. Is that correct? Uh, on the top, 9053 Okay. All right. The balance is different. Okay. So $9,053.16. All right. Any questions? Otherwise, I'll take a motion. Move. All right. Second. All in favor? All right. right. Opposed? Carries. All right. Financial summary. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, Caitlin just printed that out. I handed it out. We recall the uh, um, our, our budget for the grant is two hundred fifty thousand. Our, our grant allocation was just <laughs> under 240, so we, we are in a budget and we still are under the budget. Two uh, bills you approved today for 3,000 for home state and 9,000 for bar. Uh, a balance, we had a $28,000. As you can tell, we're almost, almost done with the grant here, or the, the plan here. So I think we're still sitting good, still staying with Bowser. And yeah, take any questions if you any questions? What happens with the extra money? That's a good question for Bowser. He's in the room. Adam. <laughs> um, it'll, it'll go back and it, it uh, should be available for other water sets that are doing these types of plans. Because generally, those, those dollars have to go towards developing a water plan. So, yeah, if there's other that need additional funding or either can be rolled to another water set that's starting. All right. Thank you. And I would just add, though, we do have, like, there's some um, budget line items in here, um, for example, for printing expenses. So we anticipate that once the plan is approved, that we'd be printing, it, you know, some of those copies and things. So some of this budget is left to be spent. Um, and then Greg is, is working away in the background right now doing, you know, plan edits. So there will definitely be more, more invoices coming from them. But we do anticipate maybe a little bit of leftover. Money. We didn't uh, order up as many donuts over this last 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to send some money back for other watersheds so they can have more. Somehow that works. All right, perfect. All right, next up, executive summary update from Greg Williams. Uh, Greg, I'll go, I can go ahead and share my screen. I've got it up here on the screen. Thanks, Caitlin. So this is a working draft of the executive summary document. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> it is an eight page document that is intended to be a, a slightly more publicly accessible summary of the plan. Uh, describes kind of how the plan was developed, who the partners are, 
uh, what are the priorities for the plan and then and what's carried out in implementation. Um, it's intended to be a little bit more generalized than the plan document itself, um, not necessarily including all of the implementation items or, or all of the details, all of the measurable goals, but a subset in there to help uh, demonstrate the kind of actions that you as a partnership are taking. Uh, the second page after the first page after the cover here is um, just about who the partnership is. Uh, th this map is just a placeholder right now. It'll be replaced with a, a slightly more stylized uh, map just showing uh, basically the, the watershed location and the municipal boundaries, uh, county boundaries, uh, but it's intended to show who the partnership includes and where you're located. If you scroll a little bit further on, it uh, talks a little bit about what the plan is intended to do and uh, describes who developed the plan in terms of the planning work group, the advisory committee, and you as the policy committee. Uh, page three goes on to focus on the local input that was collected during the, the plan development process, summarizing the kickoff event, the waterside chats, the surveys that were returned by about 300 residents, and the story map that is currently online right now at the um, at the Olmstead uh, SWCD website. And just some images here um, that that we will will caption these to to highlight some of the issues that are present within the watershed. And then we talk about the priority issues and resources. Essentially, what's the problem? And this page summarizes those nine issue areas that you prioritized uh, relatively early in the plan development process. Uh, this sorts them into the level one, level two, and level three issues in terms of the highest priority to lowest priority. The intent is that it, this is incomplete right now, but the intent is that each one of these issues will have its own sort of icon that goes with it that'll help identify where there are goals and the implementation items that address that issue throughout the executive summary. And the, the color formatting here is just to show that the level one, level two, and level three. There's a little sidebar at the bottom here that introduces karst geology. Uh, we reference karst geology in a couple of the issue descriptions, and it's prevalent throughout the, the plan uh, document itself and the watershed. So we thought it would be worth mentioning for folks who might be picking this up for the first time who don't know what karst geology is and how it affects water quality and groundwater and things like that. After that, we move into the measurable goals. So again, it's, it's sort of a what can we achieve? Uh, this is not a comprehensive list of the goals, but we've provided, uh, I think, five or six different examples in here um, that are going to be correlated to those issues through those icons. Uh, goals related to um, drinking water testing, um, stream bank restoration, use of cover crops to improve soil health, and uh, expansion of forested areas. So just a couple examples that are shown here. We talk a little bit about the prioritization and targeting of where actions are located. And again, the, the maps that are shown here are a little bit more detailed than we will include in the final version here. This is just kind of a working version based on what we have already available in the plan, but it's a little bit too detailed for, for this level of audience, and we don't want people to have to pull out the magnifying glass to try and look at the legend there. So this will be um, updated to show the two maps that show the surface water priority areas, the, the three levels of surface water priority areas, and then the two levels of groundwater priority areas. And then we have a page that talks about the implementation practices. And again, this does not you know, uh, faithfully recreate every line from the implementation program that's included in the plan and itself is about eight pages long. Uh, this is more of a, a generalized implementation program, it talks about the types of projects that we'll do um, in bulleted form. Uh, the language here is very parallel to what this, what's included online in the story map. And there are a couple of examples shown here, which ideally they'll in the future iterations there will be, you know, a picture associated with each one. But 
um, talking about soil health practices and the use of cover crops and also stream bank restorations, uh, citing the Cascade Creek restoration in Rochester as a project example. And then the last page here is how you execute the plan. Uh, just a little bit about where the funding sources are coming from and how that funding is going to be allocated with about 85% going to projects and practices and about 15% going towards you know, monitoring, education, and administration. We also have a sidebar here that talks about the cost sharing program, which is going to be where much of that funding is, is allocated and get just the opportunities to get involved will include um, the logos and, and links to all of the different partner websites the counties uh, swcd's watershed district and city of rochester not complete yet but this gives you an idea of, of where it's going both content wise and stylistically Are we asking for thoughts on it? Or? I guess, you know, if you have any comments, suggestions. This is the first time you're looking at it, so. Any thoughts? Comments? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Brad Peterson, Dodge County. Um, I know this is the first time I've sat in here, so um, I haven't had the honors that you guys have had going through hours and hours listening to all this stuff. Um, but this was a little confusing for me since it was the first time I saw this. And maybe to, because this is supposed to be an executive summary of the, the plan. That's what, what we're trying to do here. Okay. So um, it kind of bounced for me a little bit rather than flowed. Um, and I'll give an example here. You, you talked about the prioritization and then you talked about examples and then you went to the targeted areas. So I would change that around a little bit and go with the prioritization and then maybe uh, uh, the targeted areas and then examples. So there's a logical flow of what, what, what the priorities were and how you came, maybe how you came to those priority areas. You just, these are our priorities. Well, why did you make them priorities? And you also mentioned about karst. I kind of understand why you, you mentioned karst on here, but you do have more than just karst area here. So, um, and, and emphasizing karst versus the other ones, that you even need to do that. Just throwing those out. And then the other thing that caught my eye is that you only had 300 surveys that came back. How many were sent out? You know? So 300 resident surveys were filled out. We sent them to about, I think it was 1,000. Does sure. anyone remember? I think it was 1,000. So we selected a randomized list in each county. Pretty good then, 30% is probably pretty good for a random like that. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it just seemed like it was pretty small for how large of a watershed district is. And, and I know. You know, the other ones that you know, um, the emphasis went all over the place, depending on where you got it from, it was a metro area or a very rural area and stuff. So, well, so that's, that's all I have. So thank you for letting me have my mm -hmm. input. Greg, do you have any thoughts about what was just said? I just want to point out that in terms of the survey responses, I think you guys should be um, that you guys did a great job of engaging stakeholders and getting input and developing this plan from from the attendance at the three waterside chats, you know, close to 100 people attended those in total. And then, you know, 300 surveys, it doesn't seem like a large number, but when you're talking watershed planning, you know, that that's quite possibly the most public input I've gotten on any of these projects. So, um, so I think that, that that's uh, not something to sneeze at, at least in, in this sort of planning, although, yeah, I understand the total number doesn't seem that that important. I think, um, I think that's a good point about the flow. Um, and also, I just, 
you know, maybe executive summary isn't the right way to be describing this. You know, the plan itself does have an executive summary that's required per the state statute to be included in the document itself. You know, we maybe this is just more of a summary document. Um, the intent here isn't necessarily to summarize the plan document itself, but provide an overview of the plan development and, and plan implementation. So I think maybe we need to think about the title a little bit more, but I, I understand your comment about the flow, and I think we could mix up where the where the prioritization sits relative to the goals. Thank you, Russ. Good comments. All right, any other thoughts, comments? I would just add that our planning work group saw this for pretty much the first time just right before this meeting too, so there may be other changes that come in, but we'll make sure to bring it back to you before it's publicly released. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Next up, the Greater Zumbro Comprehensive Watershed Management Plan review of comments received from state agencies during 60-day review period. Yep. So this is included in the packet. Um, it's the last attachment, the big, the big matrix there, and. Greg, do you want to um, do you want to go ahead and share your screen? You might have a. It might be easier for you with an Excel sheet to share that rather than me sharing the PDF version. Yes, give me like two seconds here. I'll stop sharing. Oh, sorry about the dogs in the background. Oh, sorry. We're used to it. Okay, uh, let me know when you are able to see the table that I have pulled up here. See, there is a table. I can't read. Okay. I am just <laughs> to uh, um, get rid of the gallery at the top and see if I can make this bigger. Um, yeah. Why isn't that? Let me get rid of it. Be able to just get rid of. This mess up there at the top, see below leave, where it says this mess. Oh, well, that's just the recording. Oh. Well, that might be as big as we can. It's better, though. Okay, well. I don't think you'll need to necessarily be reading through any of this. I can I can paraphrase or share the relevant information. Uh, consistent with the the um, one watershed one plan guidance, uh, a couple months ago, you you as a policy committee authorized uh, Caitlin to distribute the 60 day draft for formal review. Uh, that version was distributed to the Board of Water and Soil Resources. All of the state plan review agencies, um, all of the the cooperators, so the the counties, the SWCDs, watershed districts, city of Rochester. It was also hosted online at the website, and there was a 60-day period for which um, entities could provide a formal comment. And as part of that, we have developed um, proposed responses to those comments. Um, Overall, there were not that many comments received. I think in total, there's about 70 formal comments received, uh, which for a plan this size is not particularly a lot. And um, most of the comments were relatively minor. Um, so I'm not gonna go through a, a whole lot of them in detail here. Um, uh, there were a lot of comments from, from the Minnesota Department of Health, just noting that their initial, um, the initial comments that they provided at the time of initiating this plan were addressed by this plan process. Um, so no edits to the plan required there. Um, you'll see on my on this, I think I have a, a field on my table here that you don't have in yours, this uh, color coded field that I used internally to determine whether these are low, medium or high priority you know, issues or comments to address. So you'll see a lot of green because a lot of these are pretty minor comments. Um, you know, most of the other comments that we also received comments from the DNR. Uh, a lot of the DNR comments were related to adding specificity around particular implementation items. Uh, again, not anything super significant. 
um, potentially, you know, things like targeting Wells Creek for sediment removal uh, projects, talking about um, connectivity around dams. Well, one of the major, or let me jump ahead here, one of the more significant comments was um, the MPCA commented about the use of nitrogen removal efficiencies that were estimated using the HSPF SAM model. So we used an HSPF SAM model during plan development to estimate pollutant reductions occurring from different practices that you might put along the landscape. And some of the inputs in terms of uh, pollutant removal efficiencies are different from the values that are recommended by the MPCA. So we are gonna go back and rerun those models using the recommended values. And in some cases, I think that for, for some of the, the areas that may decrease the nitrogen removals by uh, not an insignificant, but not a, a major amount, it might result in maybe a 20% reduction, things like that. Um, there were some questions from the, the Board of Water and Soil Resources about the prioritization of level one and level two issues. Um, much of that has been worked out through the um, development of the individual project scoring sheet that the planning work group has been working on. So really no major concerns there. Uh, we also received comments from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Again, the, the primary comment there was just related to that nitrogen removal efficiency. Uh, we received several comments from John Weiss. Uh, comment from Dodge County about uh, Manterville Dam. And also comments from Minnesota Department of Agriculture again related mostly to specific implementation activities and wanting to uh, make sure that they were listed as a partner for for many of those when it comes to implementation um, if i'm happy to address any specific comments that folks might have come across in reviewing the the table here uh, but overall the comments were relatively minor and uh, we were we've been going through the process of updating the plan to address these comments without too much concern. Okay, any questions or comments? All right. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. All right. Well, um, before we move on, I I would say so we. Um, we sent the, the notice for the public hearing tonight was published in the paper. It was also posted on the web page. We um, offered up for people to submit comments ahead of time if anyone had anything that they would like um, to have either read at the public hearing or if they would like to come in person to the public hearing. We did not receive anything in advance of this. So we did establish that the public hearing time would start at 530. So we're a little ahead of schedule here, but I think what we can do is um, to just break and then reconvene at 5.30 to call the public hearing. Um, I would say the planning work group discussed prior to this meeting, and you have the opportunity as the policy committee um, to essentially, after the public hearing is done, you know, if there aren't any major comments received from the public that would um, alter or, need, you know, make um, more advanced plan revisions, then you could go ahead and officially release for the planning work group to release that plan to Bowser for their 90-day review so how, at the end of the public hearing. The public hearing opens at 5.30. How, how long do we wait before we do that? To close it, you mean? I, I think if somebody is here with it. Yeah. It's kind of like we do at the county board, I think. Um, I'd suggest maybe that we we have a sign-up sheet back there for not only people that show up to the meeting, but also to register as wanting to provide comments. And then we can provide that to you and you can call them um, as their names are listed on the sheet. But I think we should maybe have some ground rules for amount of time that we would want to allow any speaker to provide comments. And I guess that's up to you guys what you want it to be, but I think typically it's uh, two or three minutes or something. That seems reasonable. I don't expect we're going to get a lot of people. Had two. We actually had just two, right? Yeah, I spoke with two members of the public that were anticipating mm -hmm. to come, but I, you know, we'll see if they. Yeah. All right. So I think maybe what we're going to do is get a motion to recess until five. 
thirty so that we can stop the recording then and then we'll reconvene at five thirty. So move. Okay. Second. All, right. All favor? Aye. Aye. I <laughs> 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 <laughs>